Good evening, everybody. It's time for Church in the Garage with Bill Cameron from the Edge of Eternity. Uh, tonight, I want to talk to you about two different types of fear, but before we get into that, I also want to ask you to take a look in my description. You will see uh, many of the friends uh, on YouTube that have channels that I support, and I would really appreciate you taking a look at those channels. Uh, they're full of great Great topics and great uh, information, especially for those of you who enjoy working on hot rides and motorcycles and bikes and other fabrication projects. So please take a look at that. Uh, like them and subscribe to those channels, please. Uh, it'll definitely be worth your while. You'll be kept up to date that way on things that they're doing and uh, be able to learn some good stuff along the way. I'd also appreciate it if you would uh, like and subscribe to this channel. Uh, this channel focuses on hot rides, bikes, and God. Those are the three things we really talk about mostly here. So anyways, tonight we're going to talk about fear. And I uh, hope you find this informative because fear is one of the biggest things that we deal with in our lives that has a negative effect upon us. So with that said, let me ask you this question. Are you afraid? Are you afraid of something? Is something bothering you so much that it keeps you awake at night, that it uh, distracts your thought process during the daytime because this thing is on your mind that's really troubling you. I think it happens to all of us. If I have to be honest, it happens to me. I've had times when I've had things that bother me and it, and it really can affect you as a person, your relationships you're in, your family life. And this is an important thing to understand. What is a healthy fear and what is an unhealthy fear? So I wanted to talk about these two types of fears tonight. A buddy of mine said, I want to read this because I want to get it right. You know, there are some sins that the love of God just won't get out of me. But the rest of them, the fear of God will get out of me. So there is this healthy and unhealthy fear we want to understand. What does it mean to fear God? What does it mean to fear man? What does all of that mean? Now, um, I'm gonna give you some examples of uh, unhealthy fears, okay? One would be, how does an abusive husband control his wife? I would say with fear. How do powers that be in this world control our behavior? I would say with fear. Fear is a very controlling, powerful weapon. Um, how did your parents control you growing up? Probably sometimes by fear. And finally, how does an angry boss control you at work? Very often times it's with fear. Hey, if you don't get that done, you're out of here. Do you understand? That type of thing, you know, that, um, that they use. So those are, that's just four examples of types of unhealthy fear. Let me read you a couple more. Um, have you ever had a fear like this? And you might look at this as a healthy or unhealthy fear, but at the same time, it is a fear. Have you ever had a fear about paying your bills on time? Have you ever had uh, a time when there's more month left at the end of your money than there is money left at the end of your month? And you're not sure how you're gonna make that car payment or that house payment or uh, whatever the case may be. That's a fear that weighs heavy on us. and. Fear is not only control, but it's also debilitating. And it's something that can really uh, work away at our spirit and our attitude and our joy. Uh, another one here, has you, have you ever had a fear with the health scare? Now, right now, my insulin pump is going off. I'm a type one diabetic and uh, it's telling me that, okay, no big deal. My battery's gonna run out here in about 15 or 20 minutes. So hey, at least you know this is only gonna be up to maybe a 15 minute lesson. Now, healthy fear. Can there be such a thing as healthy fear? Listen to this. How about when you have reverence for something? Growing up, did you ever have reverence like for your parents or your grandparents or maybe a teacher or a scout leader <clears throat> you didn't want to let them down. You, you had reverence and, 
And so this fear wasn't fear of them hurting you, but it was a fear of you disappointing them. Have you ever experienced that? And because you had that type of reverence, which can also be considered a type of fear, that you did your best not to disappoint them. Usually that person knows that, that you're trying your best to do your best for them. And that's fantastic. That's a, a healthy um, fear. Or how about, um, the, I think this is one maybe a lot of uh, guys have had to deal with throughout their lifetimes, especially uh, growing up and through their teenage years, was fearing your dad, not out of his anger, but fearing your dad because you don't want to bring disappointment to him. I would say for me, that probably would uh, be a category that I would fall into, um, that I just didn't want to disappoint him. You know, I wanted to do things that made him proud, and I think that's a common thing. Now, I'm going to read you uh, four or five Bible verses here. They all come out of the book of Proverbs. Proverbs is, um, is a really, really great book for wisdom and, and learning things, how uh, to respond and how to react to things, and it's just a great book to read. Now, if you have your Bible with you, or if you don't, just remember to uh, take it out later tonight or look it up on your cell phone or your computer. Look up Proverbs chapter 14, because that's where all of our scripture will come from tonight. Proverbs 14 uh, verse 2 says this, Whoever fears the Lord walks uprightly, but those who despise him are devious in their ways. Um, now, this, this, this is a verse that um, it's not confusing, but it can be taken in a couple of different ways. Okay, whoever fears the Lord walks uprightly. That's that, like that um, type of fear where you don't want to let him down. You know him. You have a relationship with him. At times we, we fall into sin or we do something that we know that isn't according to his will, per se. It's nothing we know that he would want us to do. And so we do our best to walk uprightly before God. But sometimes we mess up. We don't want to disappoint him. And the good news with God is that he will forgive us. And when we ask him to forgive us, it's just gone. He doesn't remember it anymore. The Bible calls it uh, separating your sins as far as the east is from the west. Okay, that's an infinite distance, right? How far is the east from the west when you push it all the way out? We have no way to measure it. It's so far. Um, I think that's an important thing to understand. But those who despise him are devious in their ways. Like, what can I get away with? If I don't have a respect for God in my life, I might try to be a little bit more devious and try to get away with things to my benefit, but I try not to get too far over the line because I don't want to get caught. But the, my conscience doesn't really bother me. So that's, that's two different kinds of fear. One that is a healthy fear and one that is an unhealthy fear. Uh, verse 16 in that same chapter of Proverbs says this, The wise fear the Lord and shun evil. I think that's common sense. If we're smart, we're going to fear God because all he tells us when he's wanting us to not do things is to protect us, not to be mean to us. He wants to protect us from consequences that uh, we may otherwise not really want to have to face. But a fool is hot-headed yet feels secure. We've probably all had that feeling in our lives too. That doesn't bother me. I don't care. I've got somebody uh, close in my life who doesn't like to work. He doesn't have a problem with um, borrowing money, begging, maybe driving from church to church, saying, hey, I need gas money, I need food money, can you give me some money? And uh, he refuses to earn money on his own. And I, and I said to him, I said, how have you reconciled that with God? I mean, the Bible clearly tells us, if you can work, you need to work so you can eat. Now there's those cases where people are handicapped or have some type of a problem that clearly disables them. That's different. But for a healthy man, 
we should go out to earn our keep, to care for our family, to pay our bills and things like that, not just um, con others out of their money in order to be able to uh, get by in life. Now, here's another really good one. This is uh, verse 26 in Proverbs 14. Whoever fears the Lord has a secure fortress. In other words, I don't have to worry about anything. If I, if I am living according to what God's standards are in my life, I have a secure fortress. It's like a firm foundation. Another scripture verse in uh, the Bible says, other foundation can no man lay than that one which is laid in Christ Jesus. When your children or grandchildren see that you have this strong fortress and confidence in God, they will feel secure. They will feel a sense of, of freedom from fear. And that is so valuable. That is such a great thing. And then verse 27 says, The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, turning a person from the snares of death. We're kept safe when we have fear for the Lord. doesn't mean that things don't happen. Uh, I have bad weeks. You have bad weeks. We have bad days. We have things happen to us. But in those things, we can have peace and, uh, and strength from above, not just our own strength, because our own strength can fail us. And now, bumping up to uh, Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 25, it says, Fear of man will prove to be a snare. If I'm fearing men, that's like a snare that I can get captured in. It can debilitate me. It can disable me. It can make me uh, go through life with no confidence. And we don't want that. God does not want that in, in you. He wants you to have no fear. Um, so that verse goes on to say, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. Safety is important. And it's part of what fear robs from us is that sense of being safe. Now, those are some healthy fears that are described there along with the opposing uh, fear that is unhealthy. They're things that teach us right from wrong uh, and they'll make us more successful. That's what Proverbs does a lot. It teaches us, okay, it shows us something that God recommends for us to do and something that he doesn't recommend us to do. This is a great book just to get life lessons from without having to make mistakes on our own. It's, it's really a great, great book. You can read it in an afternoon easily. It's, uh, it's right uh, next to the book of Psalms in your Bible. Psalms is right in the middle of your Bible, so you, you could find Proverbs uh, right next door to that. Now, what's a good example of um, fear controlling us? How about, uh, oh, how about COVID? COVID. To me, it fits this verse right here that says it's a snare. It's a snare. What were you told to believe all of these months over the last oh, year and a half or so? You got to get the jabs and you got to wear a mask or you will surely die. This is so contagious and so dangerous that you will not make it. So for the greater good of humanity, you need to do this. Set your own opinions and beliefs aside and do what we tell you because it's the best thing for you. That's a snare. By the way, my wife told me this. Uh, she read this statistic online somewhere and it was a reputable uh, site uh, that she goes to. And uh, they said, I wanna make sure I get this right. Did you know that over 10,000 500 people have either died or become severely handicapped from getting the jabs. Now, if you've got the jabs, I'm not saying you did something wrong. I'm just saying the message that we were given was not all that accurate or maybe even honest. So these medical issues that either cause death or permanent damage are very severe. 
They're changing over 10,500 people's lives from now till the day they die. Did you know that is more death and complications than every other vaccine given combined over the last 30 years? So when you're told it's safe, take it, or we're going to we're going to send um, people door to door to double check to make sure you're vaccinated so you, you are kept safe and you're keeping your neighbors safe. Keep this in mind. What is this all about? We've been talking about Revelation and we do need to get back to that book, but there's so many other interesting things as well to talk about. Um, and these types of control systems that government comes up with are things that are talked about in the book of Revelation and, and uh, end time prophecies. And it sure seems like we're approaching some of those days because the technologies are there to do everything that's talked about in the book of Revelation. And even some of the prophecies in Psalms and Daniel and Ezekiel and all these other Old Testament prophets, Isaiah, um, that we need to understand and, and be aware of. But... God gave us a brain to exercise common sense. And as many of you know, there is not a whole lot of that in this world today. But we can have it. And we can learn from God what is right and what is wrong, what is best and what is not. Um, for the fear of man will prove to be a snare. If you do things out of fear and uh, uh, pressure from somebody in a position of authority or something like that, it's likely going to be a snare, something that you're going to get caught in and not know how to get out of. Um, but whoever trusts in the Lord will be kept safe. It is the fear of man that makes people compromise on what they believe. It is the fear of man that causes men and women to look to others and public opinion to know what to think. Okay? Kind of what we've just been talking about. So to fear the Lord is just simply to trust him. Believe what he says and then follow that instruction. Um, what does that do? It keeps us out of the snare. These things that can get a hold of us and then not let go. Now, I'm just going to read to you a good prayer to say. Um, now, this prayer came from something called the Promise Keepers. I think it was in the 80s or maybe the 90s where this big prof, um, Promise Keeper movement was going around the country to get men involved with the Bible and with their families and kind of re-engage uh, this thing about faith. Here's what it says. Very simple. Help me to fear you, Lord, with the right kind of fear so that I will not fear you at the judgment. If I fear you now, I won't fear you then. Think about that. If I don't fear you now, I will certainly fear you then. The Bible says it is appointed unto men once to die and then after that the judgment. Just this last, this past week on Tuesday, I did a funeral uh, for a very, very good close family friend. And um, this guy was a fantastic guy. I mean, he, he was a car guy. He... He was a great engineer. He did a lot of really, really um, advanced things in the auto industry and uh, really was a well-respected person. And it was an honor to know him. Um, this man did not fear. He just did the right thing. And it was great to see this person. There were a lot of people at the funeral. Many people spoke and talked about his influence in their lives. That's the kind of legacy that we want to be able to leave behind. This, this good legacy that, that um, says, hey, he did what was right. And he was successful. He was a good man. And uh, we all look up to that. So just remember this prayer. And that, those two lines there, if I fear you now, I won't fear you then. But if I don't fear you now, I will surely fear you then. Here are those verses. You can take a screenshot of these. Maybe read them or look them up on your, on your cell phone or on your computer. And just try to determine for yourself, do I have healthy fears or unhealthy fears? And I think if we can get away from these unhealthy fears, it will bless us.
Thank you for joining me tonight. Don't forget to check out the description and share this video with others. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.